When you truly set your heart to love God, you don't want to do anything to hurt Him. The reason why I don't love to sin is not because I'm a Christian or I'm a pastor. The reason why I hate to sin is because I love Him too much to hurt Him. Many believers today, because they've not understood what this sort of their, their choice to love God is, they play with sin. Believers play with sin and say grace will cover it. It's because they don't have a heart to love Him. How can you hurt the one you love? You don't understand that when you and I go our way to do things that is sinful, we are hurting Him. This, this, this sets me free from the place of doing anything because your love is not just what people see outside. When the doors are shut, when the light is off and it's you with yourself, will you hurt him or still love him? You have no rival, you have no equal, you stand as God all by yourself Who compares to you You are matchless in all your ways Oh, at the mention of your name Demons tremble At the mention of your name Every sickness, every pain Has no choice but to bow At the name of Jesus Death could not contain you The grave could not contain you It had no choice but to release you For you are sovereign God Let me encourage you from what I've titled, you can choose to love God. You can choose to love God. You can choose to love God. And then let's quickly open to Psalm 18, from verse 1 to verse 3. Psalm 18. Thank God for his holy written word. Psalm 18. From verse 1 to verse 3. Shall we all read together? 1, 2, 3, go. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the arm of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Praise the Lord. I put here, our Christian life revolves around the very important subject of love. That is why we need an ongoing understanding of what the God kind of love is and how to walk in it. So the God kind of love and how to walk in it. But on Friday, as I was still preparing to teach, which I wanted to teach these, the Spirit of the Lord quickened in my heart that it's important to know that love is not something that uh, just happens, especially in our walk with Him. We can choose to love Him. Love is a choice. Everything love is a choice. Yeah. It is a choice and it's a commitment that is born out of our sense of absolute loyalty. Love is a choice. It is a commitment because one of the things God gave man when he created man was choice. Will to make a choice. You can eat everything in this garden. But don't touch this one. The day you touch it and you eat it, you die. So he left man to always be able to make the choice. It does not impose. God is not an, impos imp imp in, uh, an impositor. He doesn't impose his things on us. It is the gods of this world. Religion imposes on people. 
And God does not impose on us. Can I amen? amen. That's why you can, it's a choice. It's a choice. So love, love is a choice. Love is a choice. And a commitment that is born out of a sense of absolute loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. We have so many disloyal people today. People cannot be loyal if they don't have that inward strength to say, I've made a choice. It's a choice. Love doesn't just happen to you. Um, the, a very practical example from the Old Testament with regards to love being a choice uh, is a relationship between uh, Ruth and Naomi, a daughter and a mother-in-law. I mean, you can see a practical demonstration of a choice. I mean, how do you explain it? This lady got married. Her husband died. She has no child for the man. And the, the mother-in-law said, well, I'm going back to my country. And the, and the, and the daughter-in-law said, I'm going with you. Wherever you go, I'll go. Your God will become my God. That's a choice. The other daughter-in-law, what's her name? Um, Oprah said, mother-in-law, bye-bye. She made a choice to say, since her husband is dead, no son, she, she wants to just make her way and start her own life. But what made Ruth make that decision? It was her choice. As a matter of fact, even Naomi tried to talk her out of it. She said, I've made up my mind. Wherever you go, I'm going with you. Can we still find such in this world? Because that's a demonstration of our commitment. Born out of loyalty. Say with me, commitment out of loyalty. Give me Ruth chapter 1 verse 15 to 17. Because if you don't understand this is in the Bible, you'll be wondering, can that be true? Yes, it is. Ruth 1, 15 to 17. Grew, 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 gone, and she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. She's saying, you can also go. I'm not forcing this on you. Read on. But Ruth said, say, Ruth said, what did she say? Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there, will, there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if anything but death parts you, somebody say commitment. commitment. That was a choice. Can you imagine that become the order in our own personal work with Jesus? She didn't turn back. How many believers today have even turned back from following Jesus? Because in the days of Jesus, not everybody fully followed after him. When he gave bread, they followed. And when no more bread, they said, mm, Jesus. Say with me, love is a choice and a commitment that is born out of a sense of absolute loyalty. I put here, you must choose to love God. He won't force you to love him. You must choose. It's your choice. Somebody may be born to the house of a priest and they may choose not to follow God. They have to make the choice. That's why it's so heartbreaking nowadays. God forbid when you find people who, who came so close to God in their, in their family upbringing and they've said no to God. I pray such will return back to God. Amen. God will not force you to love him because he knows love cannot be forced. Excuse me, love cannot be forced. No, cannot be forced. Cannot be forced. And throughout the scripture, we see that God's love for his people is much more than a decision. It was his choice. 
God made the choice to love us. I love it when it says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Jesus said it. He said, you didn't choose me, it was my choice. And the same way I chose you because I love you, I want you to choose me. As simple as this message will sound, it will amaze you that not every believer, they are saved, but they have not fully chosen to love God. Because when I was thinking of what this month will be, I wasn't just thinking of February as the month of love. I was reading that scripture from that um, Psalm 18 when David said, I will love you. And he just hit me. He said, this is a choice. But look at God's own choice from these scriptures which I want to highlight before I come to the other part. In Zechariah chapter 3, verse 17. Zechariah 3, 17. Read everybody, go on. The Lord your God is your midst. Uh -huh. The mighty one, he will save. Uh -huh. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. Uh -huh. He will rejoice over you with singing. Give me Jeremiah 32, verse 40 to 41. Still talking about God's personal choice to love us. Look, he told his people. Even while they were in, in exile. Jeremiah 32 from verse 40. Go on. He says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them. That I will not turn away from doing them good. Somebody shall glory. glory. Can you imagine? He said, I will not turn. I will not turn. Even if they turn away from me. I will not turn. From doing them what? Good, not evil. Go on. But I will put my fear in their heart so that they will not depart from me. Yes, I will rejoice over them to do. So God is rejoicing over me to do me good. He said, I will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. What, what made God to decide to say David is a man after my own heart? It was because of David's personal choice. See, when David made it his own personal choice to love God. Say that with me. David made it his own personal choice to love God. Look at that Psalm 18, verse 1. Psalm 18, verse 1. Very simple verse of a scripture. Go on. He says, I will love you, O Lord, with my strength. That's deep. Someone say, love is, is a choice. In the world today, when people are enforcing things on people, Arrange marriage. Even if the woman wants, no, does not want to marry the man, they are, she is forced to marry him. That's how you act. And that's what this world is all about. It's, it's, it's full of enforcement. Yeah. David said, I will work. I will love you. Oh Lord, with my strength, So, that word there means that it is an expression of tender and deep emotion. You cannot love him and you will not be emotional about it. And it will, it will, it will, it will reflect in everything. Your passion, your worship, your praise, your giving, your love in everything. I will love you, O oh Lord, with my I pray against all all. May we continue to love him. Amen. May we choose to love him. What occupies your thought? Even in, 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 in decision making, in day-to-day -day affairs, what, what, what informs our decision? Haven't you heard of believers when they, they're confronted with some issues, you say, well, let's forget about Christianity for now. It's like saying, let's forget about God in this time. God has to be involved. 
If God is not involved, there's no life. And that's what the system of this world we are living in. They want to kick out anything that is God. God out of the way. God out of the school. God out of the system. Just like saying we don't want light. Because that is the true light. It is the, the light that shines in darkness and darkness does not comprehend with it. Some say, I choose to love God. Look at Luke chapter 10. Still in, close to that verse we just read. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 26. Luke 10, 25 to 26. It is a, in the synoptics, certain, each, certain event are also repeated in other gospel. In, in Luke, the same thing. But I want to highlight one or two things there. Go on. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit in eternal life? Uh -huh. He said to him, What is your written of the law and what is your understanding of it? I love, I love the way Jesus responded. He's a lawyer. He's trying to question him. He's trying to, what do you, what do you lawyer do? Um, huh? Cross-examine him. You want to cross-examine the master. Cross-examine the master. And I love you. <laughs> Teacher! What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? You're a lawyer. You know the law. I mean, you're a lawyer. You know the law now. So what is written in the law? And what is your reading of it? Because you can know what the law says, but do you, would you have an understanding? What is your reading? What is your interpretation of it? Because even in today's legal system, somebody can still misinterpret the law. And sometimes when law are misinterpreted, people don't get justice, unfortunately. And that's why some will have to keep on proving their case and proving their case. In the country I know until the Supreme Court. And what is the guarantee that you will still get justice? Because it all depends. Because if a man's mind, even if they know what the law says, you can still misinterpret it. And say, it's a funny system. Even what you, you wrote, we agreed on. You read that the wrong thing. You said, no, it was... Jesus said, what is written in, and what is your reading of it? May we not only just know the letter, may, you, may we know the interpretation. Amen. What is written in the law and what is your reading of it? Look at verse 27. Go on. So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and all with and your neighbors as yourself. Now look, listen to this now. This was not Jesus telling him what the law says. They knew what the law says. They knew what God requires. It is not Jesus giving the commandment, you shall love the Lord. You tell him what the law says. So he, the lawyer, was telling him what the law says, what is required. And look at Jesus' response. Verse 28. Go on. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. If you want to live, now do this. Tell anybody, do this and you will live. Mr. Lawyer, what is your reading of the law? He told him what the reading is. But he does not have the full interpretation of it. Just like today, many believers... I've stopped reading their Bible because they've lost interest. The system has dulled their mind. Or even those who read it, they have a, a form of revelation, but they don't have the grace for implementation. Because revelation is not the same as implementation. If you have revelation but you don't implement it, it's as good as not having a revelation. 
So Jesus said, now go and implement it. You have the revelation of what the law say, but implement, so implement it. Implement it. Say revelation, revelation without implementation is of no use. Yeah. So many revelation but no implementation. He said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will leave. So do this and you will leave. I wrote something there which is a lie with what I've been saying. I said, with regards to the recent statement I've been making, life is for living and life is for giving. I've also come to learn that the secret to living is love. Say with me, life is for living and life is for giving. The secret to living is love. Jesus said, do this and you will live. It's not just talking about just physical life only. Because so many people, they are physically alive, but they are dead. Because the subject of love is gone out of their life. No love, no life. Say that with me. Jesus said, do this and what? Live. Do this and leave. Say that, do this and leave. So I said, can it be deduced from the words of Jesus that failure to love can result to death? Can it be deduced? Because this is how you read your Bible, not just read letter. Read it and think of it and apply it. So if Jesus said, do this and leave. So what happens to a man who don't do this? It's death. Not just physical death only. Death is... To be cut off from the flow of God's life. Death is not just physical death only. Are you listening to me? It's not just when Mr. X, Y, Z is dead. A man is living but he's dead because there's no inflow and the outflow of the life of God. True life is in the inflow and the outflow of God's life. Say it again, do this, do this and live. So, what is God's responsiveness to those who choose to love him? Because God always responds to those who choose. Who have made their mind to, they made that choice that I'm going to love him. He responds. In the same book of Psalm, look at God's responsiveness to those who chose to love him. Look at Psalm 91, verse 14. This is one of the Psalms of David. Don't forget, David said, I will love the Lord. I will love you, Lord, with all my strength. And look at God's response. Verse 14. Go on. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. Look at verse 15. He shall call upon me. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that these scriptures is not just for anyone. It's for those who made their choice to set their love on him. Because he has set his love upon me. That's what the Bible says. Because, because you said you will love me with your strength, because you have set your law, you set it on me. It's just like the word set is like a thermostat. In the thermostat, you can have the boiler in your house, but your thermostat will, can you believe, imagine your boiler is on, but if your thermostat is on zero, the house will be cold. Because your thermostat will determine how warm the house is. So you can set your oh, glory to God. Just imagine setting your affection of your love on God. And only God knows when you set it. Because you can set it on high or on low. So a, one man's house is warm in the winter. Another man's house is cold in winter. And yet they both have the same boiler. What is the difference? The thermostat. 
Because he has set his love on what? On me. Does that mean that I can set my love on other things? Yes. Anyone, just like you and I can decide what thermostat you set, what you set your thermostat in your own houses. I can't set the one in your house. You can't set the one in my house because it's my choice. So it's a choice. choice. Yeah. Many, many believers' house is cold today because of what, where they've set the thermostat of their love for God. Put that scripture on. Because he has set his love upon me. Some have set their love upon prosperity, upon, upon things, not God. Some have set their love on what to eat and what to drink, not him. But because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Say it's a response to God's love. Not only that, I, just imagine that word, I, I, I. I will set him on I because he has known my name. He will call upon me. I will answer him. You, you, you and I know that many times, even not everybody that calls your number, you answer when he wants to see, if you see them, it's not the one you, you love. You say, uh, he can go to voicemail. Talk to me. Thank God God doesn't have a voicemail. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. So you can love God and go through trouble. It is the presence of God that will make the difference. Amen. Loving God doesn't mean you don't go to challenges. I can never forget the scripture. I still remember very vividly. I was in the polytechnic when I was going through a particular challenge. And this scripture came alive in my life. There was a no confronting me from what I needed to get an yes for. God said, because you have set your love on me, I will deliver you. I will set you on eye. God turned things out. I can never forget it. I was reading the book of Kenneth Egg at that time. What to do when faith seems weak and victory is lost? I remember this scripture came alive. Delight yourself in the Lord. You will give you the desires of your heart. I highlight a few points here as God's responsiveness to those who choose to love him. Number one, the promise of his deliverance. Number two, the promise of his elevation. Number three, the promise of answered prayer. Number four, the promise of honor. I'll repeat. Say me to those who choose to love God. God will respond with his promise of, of his deliverance. The promise of his elevation. The promise of answered prayer. The promise of honor. Hallelujah. God responds. That's why God responded to David. Even after David is come and gone, God is still responding on his behalf. I remember one, case, one time ago in the Israel, I understand that in their parliament, one of the parliamentarians mouth drove rough and spoke ill of David, of King David. He was expelled. Am I right? In, in Israel, in today's Israel, a parliamentarian spoke ill of David. Was sacked. Even in death, God still honoring him. Why? He chose to love him. Was he a perfect man? No. But it was his heart. So this subject of love is not just Love in the way the world knows. God says, I want my people to choose to love me. Stand up on your feet. Say, help me. Help me. Oh, God, oh God, to love you with all my heart, my soul, and mind, and my strength. 
As your love works in me, help me also to love my neighbor as myself. Call upon the Lord right now. Lord, uh, let your love help me to love you. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. You know, this message set, will set a man and a woman free where obeying God is concerned. When you truly set your heart to love God, you don't want to do anything to hurt him. The reason why I don't love to sin is not because I'm a Christian or I'm a pastor. The reason why I hate to sin is because I love him too much to hurt him. Many believers today, because they've not understood what this sort of their, their choice to love God is, they play with sin. Believers play with sin and say grace will cover it. It's because they don't have a heart to love him. How can you hurt the one you love? You don't understand that when you and I go our way to do things that is sinful, we are hurting him. This, this, this sets me free from the place of doing anything because your love is not just what people see outside. When the doors are shut, when the light is off and it's you with yourself, will you hurt him or still love him? Say, help me to love you. Lord, with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and strength. Praise the Lord. What a great joy to bring you this message today. I trust that God spoke to your heart, and I believe that the word of God you've heard will profit you, will prosper you, and will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. For those who have not given their heart to Jesus, I want to challenge you to open the door of your heart to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior by praying this simple prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am, a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me now. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. I believe in my heart that you died for my sin. You were buried, but on the third day, God raised you up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as that prayer may sound, if you pray it from your heart, guess what? God heard you and you are saved. So I rejoice with you for this new beginning. I want to encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church where you can be nurtured and you can be helped in your work with God. If there's any way I can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to write me or contact the number on the screen and it will be my pleasure to respond to you. Well, until next time when I come into your home, you keep on winning because God is on your side. You are destined to win.